episode of Behind the Helmet, where we feature the people behind what you would regularly just see as something zooming past you, especially in traffic. <laughs> As we start today's episode, it gives me great joy to introduce our guest, but not before we go straight into our game. It's game time on Behind the Helmet. Bing, bing, bing! So the rules of the game are simple. You have 30 seconds to spell out as many words as possible. Each correct spelled word awards you five points. Also, there's a coin in front of you. You will toss it heads or tails to determine who goes first. All the best. Are you heads or tails? Heads, for sure. Okay. I'm not the head or the tail. Hey! <laughs> it's a head. Yeah, she's the. Okay, I'm Didi, you go first. Mm -hmm. You have 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Your time starts now. Accelerating. A C C E L A R A T E uh, T I N G. Revving. R E W -V, v I N G. Saddlebags. Sorry? Saddlebags. S A D D L E B A G S. Braking. B R A K I N G. Carburetor. C U R B E T O R. And your time is up. Well done, <laughs> Didi. Thank you. Carburetor C A. Carry you up. Your time starts now. Stalling. S T A L L I N G. Throttle. T H O T T L E. Motorcyclist. M O R. M O M O T O R C L Y at least chassis C H oh, A S S I S electricity like suspension S U S U S S U Your C time is up, well done. <laughs> <laughs> the winner in this case is Didi. Well done, Didi. Wow! <laughs> With the fifteen head. points. She Another tail. <laughs> we are the head. American English. She got, <laughs> she got 15 points. Oh, yeah. man. Yes. What did she get? She got 10 points. Oh. But anyway, I do this for my guests so that like you leave here with confidence. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. like, if I win everything, it's like, I'm already winning, having the show, I'm already winning. You know what I'm saying? So it's a thing we do. Yeah, we what you're saying. <laughs> Very kind. Thank yeah. you. Spell. I used to know how to spell. For sure, I can spell your name. D E E D E. It's so simple. Maybe you needed Swahili words. Are you better? That is the truth. We should try this game in Swahili. That was game time. On behind the helmet, you know the person that won is this lady on set. I know you're not ready to meet her. She is just epic. To me, she's one of those people who, when I started riding, I found her already riding. And she was just cruising. She's like, oh, cool, like just prospering. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be a Didi one day. Like, that's what happens. Didi, please introduce yourself to the Behind the Helmet Squad Gang Gang. Hello, guys. My name is Didi Mudeu. And I'm a biker, first of all. I love it. And what else? And we have some people in oh, yeah. set joining us. Hello. These are my so little cute. creations. I never thought I'd say an all is cute, but it's just the pink yeah. giving. Didi, uh, when I send you a pesa, what do I see? The government knows. Send uh -huh. me a pesa, you'll find out. Oh, wow. So you're not going to be good. Okay, fine. So not Didi today. is a brand. Didi lo at Didi Locks on, on Instagram. Instagram. The Didi Locks. Heartbreak Hotel, where are the locks? I shaved them last year. <laughs> I had them for like a year. Kiparamoto. <laughs> Majiamoto. <laughs> so, um, so you have changed your name? No. You can't be Didi Locks. I, I was Didi, Didi Locks. Kipara. <laughs> even before I got the Locks. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's always your... It was a nickname someone gave me in uh -huh. high school. So... Uh -huh. It just, it just stayed. I don't want us to miss this part. So let's introduce these guys. What are they doing here? And are they permanent guys with you? Do they travel with you? No, no, Or no. they're temporary? <laughs> no attachments, no strings, no rings attached? No, this, uh, um, they're called amigurumi. It's a Japanese art form of 
using yarn and a crochet hook to make stuffed toys. So, Amigurumi guys, we're learning. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is an owl, a bunny, a long necked bear. Okay. And a key holder. Oh, which is old. already sold to me. <laughs> Definitely gone, gone, gone. And you can make this. How can guys get in touch with you to get this? Oh, I have, have a page uh -huh. called Kalendi's Creations. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's what I have. It somewhere. Yeah, and you can see other things. I also have dolls, like for your girls, for nieces. Yeah, I love it. By Kenyan, by the way, we're all about it. Sure. So, how does this yarn making amigurumi? Um, I know you also have a background in interior design. Yes. Get onto two wheels. I think this is just another outlet for me as a creative, because I love to make things with my hands, and. The it connects with interior design because you start from scratch with bare things and end up with something beautiful and that brings joy basically. That's what I enjoy doing. So does biking make you feel the same way? Oh my gosh, you're going to make me cry. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, biking is is an outlet for me. Uh -huh. That when I'm on the bike, it's just freeing. My mind is at peace and. Uh, I don't know. It's also an outlet, just the same way these things are an outlet for me as well. I could, I can see that, like, literally, when, when I watch you riding, because it's just like, shui, 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 mm. shui, shui. Like, she literally has a rhythm. And, you know, you can tell someone riding, they might not be on the bike you know, but you're just like, that's her style. Um, I got a chance to interview you on my Instagram. Please check out that interview. It was yeah. also quite deep Um, a while back. What conversations are we having? Was it? Women's IFRD. Week, which is IFRD, yeah, International yeah. Female Writers yeah. Day. But now we're here and yeah. having this conversation for those who watch Behind the Helmet. When is the first time you sat on a bike? The first time I sat on a bike to ride it or to be carried or... Like you sat and you okay. were... Okay, maybe the one you remember for like it was memorable. Not the do the... Like, yes, I remember my brother was a biker. Mm -hmm for like back in 2011. Oh wow. Yeah. That's so, 1989 to uh, my friends. Yes. <laughs> some poor being born. Right. Anyway. <laughs> so that's the first time I sat on a bike. I sat on his bike and I remember him teaching me how to ride, but not on his bike. His bike was a 1000 cc bike. Crazy. Heavy. So I tried with a friend's bike, his friend's bike, an Apache. Uh -huh. That time Apaches were so affordable. I wish I started riding then. <laughs> so that's the first time I rode taught clutch nini nini. I moved the bike I'm like oh my gosh this is so exciting yeah but then it took me so long to get into biking after that yeah yeah and when did you decide like now this is my time I'm going to look for the money I'm going to get training I'm going to find community yeah that was in 2020 that's when I was like I need to do this I've been putting it off for so many years and I've just been seeing the community online and everything and 2020 I just said you know what I'm paying for this riding school and I did it towards the end of 2020 yeah do you believe it's four years I can't believe it, it. is I can't believe already it. It and so day. many adventures yeah let's talk about your most exciting adventure because I know if you check out her Instagram and we're gonna be tagging a lot of that on the show yeah. She's been to so many places. She has a squad gang gang, which is also a real encouragement to ride with. Yeah, <laughs> let's ride. Yeah. So. Which was the most exciting? Exciting, like exhilarating. Um, I feel like most of the long distance riding I've done has have been exciting. I think the first one that was quite memorable for me is when I did a solo ride to Eldoret. I Alone. think I was just three months into riding. I was such a newbie. <laughs> Let me tell you where my support system comes in. I called my brother. I was like, there's a friend of mine who's in Eldoret. And I want to go to Eldoret. Do you think I can make it? He was like, you've gone to driving school. You have a license. You know how to ride the bike. The bike is new. What is holding you back? And that's how I went to Eldoret. Solo. Woke up. Packed my bags. Fueled the bike. Checked my tire pressure. And I rode to Eldoret solo. Like, what am I doing in biking, guys? <laughs> Me, I'm just like, I'm going to thicker road. It's like a whole emotional <laughs> thing. And I call, yeah. I do call, I do call. So I'm like, Sasa, eh, now I need ride. So I'm just waiting for that affirmation for like, eh, like, oh, sawa. But if someone goes like, I am as you, you're like, oh, packing that story. Eldoret. Yes. And back. 
and back. Any challenges you went through on the road? Oh, oh first of all, that's when I realized my gear is is not warm Mother at wash, all yeah. because you hit Limuru. Yeah. I thought I was getting pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's you see that fog you see. Yeah, Water, yeah. Eh? So that was early morning. So eh. by the time I was reaching Naivasha, I was cold. I had eh. a jumper, I had a t-shirt, I had something else inside, yeah. but I was still cold. Yeah. But after that, the weather got better. Yeah. Then eh, Nairobi Nakuru Highway. That was character development. Yes. <laughs> but um, my bro g- gave me advice, yeah. like just just maintain what you're comfortable with, follow the rules of the road. If someone just stay safe, ride safe. Yeah. What do we do, Paul Ludwana Brothers? We're going to be taking a short break. <laughs> and of course, getting back into some Diddy adventures. As we do that, please be sure to like, comment, share, and keep tuned right here. If you leave us a comment, we're so happy that you're watching. So please let us know that you are watching. This is Behind the Helmet. Kerry Kagiri, I'm hanging out with... Diddy Locks. Yeah. <laughs> Release your creativity into the world around you and explore your mind without limits at the only place that lets you do so. The Vasha Creatives Hub is the home of sugar, spice and everything nice for all creatives. With a lens, a mic and a little help, it's lights, camera, action on the go. A soundproof facility for your podcast and the very first step to your own show with our state-of-the-art setup. Studio hire services at prices so low, photo shoots for all your occasions, and our green screen package is so unreal, there is no way you could say no. So, what are you waiting for? Head on down to Davasha Creatives Hub on Thicker Road, right next to KCA University and get all your artistic needs sorted out. For bookings, call 724 500 574 today. And we are back. This is Behind the Helmet. We are featuring Adventures of Diddy Locks. Diddy Locks. Yes. There's so much drama on the road and we really want to use this platform that God has given us to highlight some of the evils that people do on the road. They're evils <laughs> because they want to kill us. You know, that time, I, I, I don't know what ride I was from. Mm-hmm. Now, this time I decided to go to uh, Mavuno Hill City on bike. Mm-hmm. And I was coming back, I was like, ah, it's only four people who tried to kill me. It was just four, you know, four people who swabbed in. It was a good day. <laughs> like, just four people who tried to, you know, just get in and, you know, make me feel like, yeah. you know, I was not on the road. They did not see me. Yeah. Um, Let's highlight some of those things because I want everyone who's watching, especially the cagers and even the do the gang and, yeah. and even other bikers to be cognizant because once you have that awareness mm-hmm. um then you can be able to to drive safer and also to be more considerate towards it might just be Didi on the way it might just be me on the way so um for a moment um the thing when you tell someone you're a biker they're like ah now we'll go pee you're know. not afraid i'm like but what makes our road unsafe right it's other road users right so it's it's um every time we get on the road you always have to think you have to be in the moment you have to say i am safe the acronym i am safe yes. how are you mentally have yes. you eaten uh, is your bike ready to go and everything mm-hmm. and like what should people watch out oh for yeah. like why oh yeah. should people what are the things that you've seen happening that it's really just someone's decision to just be more thoughtful yes and yes. maybe from your own experiences and yeah. challenges yeah i think People need to realize we are also legal on the road. Right. We are meant to be on the road. Right. We are motorcyclists. We are supposed to be on the road. Not on the side of the road, not uko at the pedestrian walk side. We are meant to be on the road. So share the road with us. And if you see us, treat us like other road users. We are. I think that's the most important right. thing that they need to realize right. we are right. road users as well. Let's talk about um, experiences you've had. Don't talk about today in specific. But oh, ukifika, <laughs> ukifika kwa building, uh, oh. unambua, eh, sema boss. <laughs> Abari boss, don't, don't talk about today. Okay, you can, you can. Okay, first of all, people don't realize that I'm a lady when right. I'm riding. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh-huh. Sometimes it's a good thing. Because you don't ask guys for the braids and all the the, the, the tutu yeah. skirts and whatnot. Yeah. You're always like a G. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes they bully ladies. Right. It's very easy. Oh, really? Sometimes okay. you, you can be bullied. Uh-huh. But sometimes when they realize you're a lady, they are kinder. Right. But in retrospect, mm-hmm. you should just be kind to all motorcycles. Right. So some of the experiences 
Boda guys have told me, hey bro, twende, twende, arakisha so bike, twende. Eh. <laughs> yeah. um, security, hey, security, I don't know if they need to be taught that we are also private bikers. There's a difference between private bikers or even bringing a delivery, if pe- people for delivery or just a regular commercial right. rider. Right. So, to de- leo ni meitu wa mze. And then you were like, before they realized, you were like, Ati? Ati, mimi si mze. <laughs> <laughs> then, but, when he realized I'm a lady, he changed his tone. Yeah. It makes a difference for right. us as ladies. But, um, there are some estates we are not allowed to go in. And it's one of those huge estates. If you park your bike at the gate, you have to walk with your helmet. Right. Like All the a way full, to where. Exactly. And I don't know, I don't, who do we talk to <laughs> about these things? Because, you know, as feedback, one of the things that I need to do before I leave office uh, in this season is deal with a couple of malls, first of all. Yeah. There's a certain mall. Let me not mention it, but it's on Gong Road. I'm coming for you. Like, I'm coming to get you. Like, you did. Anyway. <laughs> because, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I remember that day, I was literally, like, I knew, okay, and it's not pride, but I was like, I was going to spend in that mall. Yeah. And there's no difference between me and, and a driver. Like, I just told like, oh, there was a robbery that happened. So I'm like, the robber could not have had a car. Are you saying the robber did not walk in on foot? Yeah. Are you saying because I'm a two-wheeler, I'm part of the robbery squad? Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway. I'm coming. I'm coming for you, by the way. You know who you are. I've had conversations with your security. And if you don't, I just get 1,000 private bikers to sign about you. I will boycott your mall. We shall not come. We shall not. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, Amira. malls. But there are also some malls who are, that are, so who are nice. kind. They have and specific. And they don't even make us pay exactly, for parking. For biker parking. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not, they're one of the few. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the other retro, the other side of the spectrum is higher. Didi, you're in community. Let's yeah. talk about that. Girls are like, how do you survive? What's how do you get friends? Uh, you know, community is such a big thing now, especially yeah. since we start getting on our gadgets and you're always here. Yeah. So having this physical thing, mm-hmm. it's very rare. Maybe you can share about the communities you're in and what and how you love them. I think once I first got on my bike, finished riding school, got my bike, I wanted to join Inked Sisterhood. And that was the first community I joined and uh, I was so happy. Right. I was I was at home, I felt at home. And just having a group of ladies where you share your experiences, people who understand, you know, there are things that are specific to us ladies right. as bikers that are not the same for, for men, like, mm-hmm. you know, riding on your periods. It's oh, a yeah. whole different wow. <laughs> aspect. A, a man world. cannot understand that. Yep. So getting that community. And I've made new friends, you know, at our... Small age, right? Making new friends is not that easy, and I've found actually true friends in the community who I also ride with. Yeah, there's a group called Let's Ride today. I've represented. Hi Let's guys. ride. <laughs> yeah, so these are getting also a smaller community of of people you gel with, right. you understand each other, and plan groups. That's when you're able to ride, go for more rides, and. And things like that. Best place you went with Let's Ride? Oh, my God. We went... Oh. We've gone to... Moyale was the recent one. Moyale! And it was such an epic ride. I, sh- I think I I have a highlight on my IG. Oh, yeah. uh, it's called the True North Ride. Uh-huh. It was quite uh, exciting. Because yeah. we stopped at um, Mount Ololokwe, went up the mountain, came down. So you guys are hiking and riding. Just go watch the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite You know what? Adventure. I'm sure we're going to grab it and we're going to have it right here yeah. on, on with all rights given by the owner. But also, yeah. please check out her IG. Let's get those numbers. Yeah. Somebody's watching and they're like, Didi is my life goal. She's so awesome. She's so creative. Yeah. She's just beautiful. Of course, I want to be Genuinely, they just want to be you. Uh, what would you advise someone who wants to get into the two-wheeler community? Just do it. The only way for you to understand what biking is is just by getting into it. Get your get legal, please. Don't ride here without a license. Go for proper riding skills. Get proper riding skills. Get a motorbike and get on the road. It it is scary, but do it afraid. Right. Do it afraid. Right. Yeah. Uh, can a boyfriend. <clears throat> 
is that part of the Behind the helmet. Yes, that one is one. Like, okay, that's an answer. Yes, don't call me. You're not going to be a So answered, answered. Um, Didi, yeah. you, you know, you do so many things. Yeah. Like literally, how has biking helped you balance your career and balance mm-hmm. your creativity part, mm-hmm. balance family? Mm-hmm. How, has that, how has it worked? How has it played in? Uh, career-wise, it is much easier to go on site as an interior designer. Traffic, I don't realize. I, okay, sometimes uh-huh. it's hectic, uh-huh. but it's much easier on a motorbike to get around Nairobi. Mm-hmm. So going to different sites, cl- meeting clients, it's much easier. Doing deliveries uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for my like little stuff toys. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And for family, I have such a supportive family. My brothers, yeah. can I just mention them? Please do shout my out. Heart and soul. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, my brother Chama and Dennis. The, everyone in our family rides. Okay, they all can ride. Oh yes. Yeah. And I have a little nephew who's obsessed with biking right now. Okay. Every time he's like, Auntie Didi, Tani buy your boots. Oh. I've got him my helmet. So slowly oh. by slowly, we are going to get him. Best aunt ever. Yeah, I try. I yeah. Try. Mm. So you buy by him? Because there's a helmet. Yes, I have. Okay. But not, but not, no, not long distance, just okay. around the estate. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Didi Lux, thank you so much for coming. Thank I have you. a hot fire round. We're going to be asking you a couple of hit questions as we go. Mm-hmm. And that will be starting shortly. Are you ready? Yes. I'm ready. What's the color of your toothbrush? Ooh, I keep changing. Pink? Are you sure? Pink or blue? <laughs> <laughs> That's such a big barrier. To get pink or orange, it makes sense. Uh, where did you go to school? Uh, high school? Pangani Girls High School. Uh, index one <laughs> in the building. Oh, <laughs> Nairobi. Um, what's the longest distance you've ever driven? Driven? Gary. Hey, I feel like maybe to Nanyuki. How long is that? Will you drive? Yeah, I rode, I drove, I, I drove. You drove it. <laughs> you drove it I yourself. drove the bike, the car. Okay, best song you've ever danced to and you enjoyed? Music. I've got to listen to TikTok. Is it? Yeah, it's the TikTok ones. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, best meal you've ever made. Oh my gosh, it's a dessert tiramisu. Oh tiramisu, oh, you made tiramisu. tiramisu. I love tiramisu. You're so fancy. <laughs> Worst meal you've ever had at a restaurant. Hey, oh, there was this small. I can't remember what it was called. It was like. In, I can't remember what it was called. But what was it? I, it had chicken and cheese, but it was so little. I didn't enjoy it that much. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. We will not it name the rest. It was that bad. Someone will sue us. <laughs> yeah. uh, worst pickup line you have ever had dropped on you. Huh? Oh, maybe time. those ones for riding. You know, yeah. the kind of ones. Uta, uta ni ride up here. Like, <laughs> Ew. No, no, it doesn't go like that. So gross. Yeah. Hardest moment of your life? Oh, losing my parents. Oh, yeah. 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 I was in form four. Yeah. That was That's tough. Hard. That was tough. That was hard. Yeah. Let's talk about best moment of your life. Up to this point, because there are many other nice moments coming yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, biking. I think yeah. the decision to oh, ride wow. has changed my life. That's a sure. great place to end for this sure. one. This is why we do Behind the Helmet. Get to know great people like Dee Dee Lux. Please follow her. Promote her business. Order toys. I feel like when I see your business, you can also make like stuff like this for like, um, you know, like businesses. So, like, if yeah, there's a business sure. and they need, like, you know, toys or something to mm-hmm. give to their staff, you can make for whatever sure. it is. Yeah. Uh, for instance, for, like, Total, you can make something for them. Exactly. You know, like, give her business. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, this is Didi Lux. Thank you so much for coming. Final word before you leave. Maybe there's something I didn't ask you on and you wanted to share. Or just what is your closing remark? Just right. Just right. <laughs> just right. I love it. Yeah. Please just right. This is behind the helmet. Remember, like, share this video. Let everybody know that you enjoyed the show. More great bikers coming up. And also you get to watch her skill set coming right up. Hi, my name is Didi, and today I'm going to show you how to put your bike on a center stand. 
The importance of putting your bike on a center stand is that it gives it more stability, especially when you park at a place where the ground level is uneven and you're not sure about the stability of the area you're parking. So this is how you put your bike on a center stand. First, put your left hand on your left handlebar, then the right hand at the back of your bike where you can grab onto, then lift up the bike so that it's upright. Next thing you do, you step on the center stand, make sure both sides of the stand are on the ground, then stand upright on it, face where you want the bike to go, then lift the bike and it should automatically come up and onto the center stand.